In this video, we'll look at second-order two-dimensional PDEs, like elliptic PDEs that include Poisson's and Laplace's equation. For Poisson's equation, the elliptic PDE takes this form, where f can be any function of the independent variables x and y. For Laplace's equation, f is equal to zero. We'll consider Dirichlet conditions, Neumann conditions, and mixed boundary conditions. For the Dirichlet conditions, the value of the dependent variable u is known at every point on the boundary of the domain. To solve second order two-dimensional PDEs, we'll divide the domain up into a grid of mesh points as shown here. And for each point in the grid, we'll consider what we call a five-point molecule. That is the solution at each point in the grid depends on the solution at the neighboring four points. In the notation used in our textbook, the point on the boundary in the lower left corner corresponds to the zeroth row and the zeroth column. The x coordinate increases across the columns and the y coordinate increases as you go up the rows. We'll assume that the spacing of the mesh in both the x and the y directions is the same. h is the distance between mesh points in both the x and y directions and all of the points are evenly spaced in the domain. When we have Dirichlet conditions, the solution to the PDE is the value of u at each of the interior mesh points. We'll obtain that solution using the finite difference method, just like we did for solving boundary value problems. That is, we'll approximate the second derivatives of u with respect to x and y using the three-point central difference formulas. So at each point in the domain, we can substitute in the central difference formula for u sub xx and the central difference formula for u sub yy. Because these both have h squared in the denominator, we can multiply this entire equation by h squared. Since we apply this equation at each of the interior mesh points, if our mesh is m by n, m points in the x direction and n points in the y direction, then m times n is equal to little n, the number of mesh points. This gives us a set of n linear equations in n unknowns. The coefficient matrix A will be an n by n matrix that is large and sparse. Sparse meaning that it has very few non-zero elements. In fact, there will only be as many as five non-zero elements per row, and many rows will contain fewer than five non-zero elements. We'll show that this can be solved iteratively using the Gauss-Seidel method. In order for this to work, A must be either diagonally dominant or symmetric and positive definite. As an example, let's consider Laplace's equation. For Laplace's equation, f is equal to zero. We'll apply Dirichlet conditions, which means that we know the values of the dependent variable u on all boundaries of the domain. We'll divide our domain up into a 5 by 5 mesh of grid points, which gives us 25 points for the dependent variable u. However, 16 of those 25 points lie on the boundaries of the domain where u is known, and 9 of those points lie on the interior of the domain where u is unknown. At each of the points on the domain where u is unknown, we can write the finite difference approximation of Laplace's equation, for which the value of u is related to the four neighboring points. Using the notation in the textbook, the bottom row of points corresponds to the zeroth row, and the left-hand column of points corresponds to the zeroth column. Your textbook author indexes the x dimension first, which means that the column index is the first value, and indexes the row number second, so the second value corresponds to the rows, and they count up from the lower left-hand corner of the domain. For one of those points, the four neighboring points are all also unknowns. But for the other eight interior points, some of the neighboring points lie on the boundary, where u is known, and some of the neighboring points lie on the interior, where u is unknown. At each of those points, multiplying the finite difference equation by minus h squared results in this linear equation relating u at ij 
that is u at the unknown point, to four other points, some of which are known and some of which are unknown. We can write a system of nine linear equations in nine unknowns corresponding to the nine unknown values of u at the nine interior mesh points. This system of nine equations and nine unknowns is written here. On the left-hand side of each of these nine equations, we've included a term corresponding to each of the nine unknown values of u. However, some of them have a coefficient of zero. We've moved the terms corresponding to the known values from the boundary over to the right-hand side of the equation. The first equation represents the finite difference approximation for Laplace's equation written for the point 1, 1. The point at 1, 1 is related to the unknown point at 1, 2, the unknown point at 2, 1, corresponding to these two points, and two known values of u on the boundary of the domain at u, 1, 0 and u, 0, 1, corresponding to these two points. So this is our five-point molecule. The remaining unknown values of u all have a zero coefficient. The second equation corresponds to Laplace's equation centered around the point u2. Now we have three unknown points on the interior of the domain at u11, u13, and u22 that all contribute, and one known point on the boundary of the domain at u02. We can write this equation for all nine of the interior mesh points. Writing it this way enables us to extract out the 9 by 9 coefficient matrix. This 9 by 9 coefficient matrix is sparse, meaning it has many entries that are equal to 0, and only a few entries that are non-zero. Furthermore, we can see that this matrix is symmetric. Each, each element of this matrix is equal to the value of the element reflected across the diagonal. However, the matrix is not tridiagonal. So it cannot be solved using the Thomas method. The matrix is almost diagonally dominant. That is, the absolute value of the diagonal element in each row is greater than the sum of the absolute values of the off-diagonal elements in the same row, for all rows except for the fifth row. In the fifth row, the diagonal element is 4, and the absolute values of the off-diagonal elements also sum to 4. So this is almost diagonally dominant, but not quite. However, we can show that this matrix is positive definite. That requires calculating nine determinants. If those nine determinants are all positive, then this is a symmetric and positive definite matrix. We need to find the determinant of the matrix with just the first element in it, and then the two by two matrix and then this 3x3 three three matrix, and this 4x4 four four matrix, and so on. Because this matrix is positive definite, we can use the Gauss-Seidel method to solve this linear system of nine equations and nine unknowns. In the next video, we'll talk about an alternative method that we could apply called an alternating direction implicit method.